Uh, welcome to a new video and in this video we want to do a little bit of another test of the iPhone versus the Huawei P50 Pro. Uh, as you can see here, uh, camera applications now. So I'm testing the camera applications and the user interface because I was testing the cameras already but people said, huh, show me the camera interfaces. It's called ultimate camera comparison and you don't have camera interfaces in there. So here's the video for you this one little viewer. So let's get started. So here we have the camera interface from the Huawei P50 Pro and you can see we have AI mode on which is like by default on and it's detecting here oops <laughs> it is detecting uh, here that we are in greenery mode and I can of course get rid of the greenery mode to have the effect that it applies to the greenery mode disabled. If I go up here you will see that probably it will detect something else. So not greenery, it should detect something else. Not maybe now clouds it should detect. Yeah, blue sky. So it's optimizing now for blue sky and so on. So it has some various different scene detection modes and showing them to you. And if I have something like here, this little flower, if I go a bit closer to it, see it's still using the main cam, but if I close up a little bit more, it will go into super macro mode, switching to the ultra wide angle, which helps you to create nice little macro shots. Then we have the whole user interface is basically um, on the right, usable with your right hand. If you hold it with one hand, like I am, I have my zoom slider here, I can go to the three and a half times zoom, I can go to the 10 times zoom and I can go to the ultra wide angle if I want to all with one hand or I can just simply slide up here and go in and out you can see this is not as smooth as probably the iPhone can do here but it's pretty nice that I have the option to do this quickly and on the left side we have some certain other um, yeah, options here that you don't use so often like flash or profiles various different looks that I can switch through that change the whole user uh, the whole uh, user experience yeah, of taking a photograph because it's changing the various different uh, filters that you can have here. And uh, there are some uh, AI lens detection stuff that I can use if I want to. This is uh, Harmon US or Emotion UI specific stuff like translating uh, words, detecting objects and so on, buying them and so on. Uh, we have uh, flash options here. We can have a full light always on. We can have normal flash, automatic flash. By default, it's disabled flash. And of course, we have video mode. The video mode, interestingly enough, it crops in a little bit because there's stabilization always active. I didn't find a way to deactivate it. And if I want to get close to an object, let's go to the same leaf here. You can see with the main lens, I can get pretty close because we have this little crop in. If I go a little bit closer, you can see it's unsharp and it's not switching to the uh, ultra wide angle. I have to manually switch to the ultra wide angle and then I can get a little bit closer. Uh, this is also the reason why that uh, the ultra wide angle might be not so ultra wide as you saw it. And this is why the other button here is four times zoom instead of uh, three and a half times zoom because it's cropped in a little bit. And the same goes for then the 10 times zoom. You can see pretty stable even if I walk around here, uh, but it's yeah not the best when it comes to this. I think Sony is doing a little bit of better job here in stabilization but this is also pretty pretty stable for walking and talking and shooting. Then we have uh, what I would call the normal modes like we have a portrait mode, we have a night mode, we have an aperture mode, portrait mode and aperture mode we can set the aperture by default it's 2.4 I think and you can set it to whatever aperture you want to have. It's simulating this aperture of course only so you can see yeah it looks a bit fake. Uh, then stop, 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 for a second. What I completely missed, and maybe I'm blind, I'm getting old, or it's just like I use the interface all the time and didn't notice that there is a movie button on the top right corner, and this allows you just like on the iOS, and I did this last time in my camera review wrong to set a specific aperture for video mode as well. And this is so cool because this basically yeah, says that we have a cinematic mode, even though it's not called cinematic mode, also on 
uh, Huawei P50 Pro and probably also other Huawei devices, like I was reminded by this dude here, that this is available since a few versions also for other Huawei devices. Of course, it's not maybe like the Apple cinematic mode that has some nice little effects like automatically detecting faces and switching from one face to the other automatically. But uh, still, it is available here, which uh, yeah brings it to a whole other level than what I was expecting and what I was experiencing so far. So I promise you to do another video comparison right after this one, where we'll compare this aperture mode with the aperture set manually. Uh, in video mode and we'll compare it to cinematic mode of the iPhone 13 Pro to see who is better in doing this fake bokeh in video mode. So back to the video. And we have the pro mode which is I think more interesting for people. We have metering modes that we can set up. Various different metering options that we have here. We have ISO that we can set, shutter speed, exposure compensation, we have focusing, we can set manual focusing, continuous or single focusing and white balance we have there as well. We have a RAW option here and we have the AF assist light on which will yeah, use a light for assisting the AF, usually not necessary for laser autofocus that is here. Some birds are very very loud flying up there. Maybe we can zoom in and show you how this will work out in RAW. I can only go to the three and a half times zoom. I cannot go further, uh, which is also interesting. A wide angle, I can also shoot, the birds are gone. Uh, but yeah, this is the, uh, interestingly enough, you can see the RAW option is also in ultra wide angle available. Uh, in single one, there's also AF assist light on and in three and a half also RAW option there. Uh, but these, uh, the flash and the uh, AF assist light are only available in one time zoom. Then the more interesting thing is here, video. You have pro mode in video as well. It's not sophisticated as maybe on the Sony Cinema Pro app or uh, Filmic Pro or all the other applications, but it's there and something that the iPhone I think completely lacks. So metering mode again, ISO that you can set up. It's saving stuff that from last time. So I used ISO 100 and shutter speed of 160s here. And EV is of course deactivated if I have set, set uh, both of them here. And I have a manual focusing uh, option here as well. So if I want to manually focus, by the way, all, uh, all I can do here is like almost, wait a second with one hand. I have a microphone plugged in which makes it a bit awkward but I can use it with one hand. Here you can see I'm only focusing now on this hand here and all with one hand usable and possible. So nice user interface here from Huawei. So I would like Huawei maybe to add an option that allows us to use um, focus peaking for this manual shots in video and in photo mode. Very very useful. And of course you have white balance as well to set up here. And the birds are again there, so uh, yeah, they're hidden somewhere, I don't see them. Anyway, um, more options. We have here lots of more options. One of the highlights is monochrome. It has a monochrome sensor and monochrome sensor are pretty cool for artistic shots, photos and so on because you get more micro contrast in them. And if you want to photograph something like this here, like a leaf, for example, you have much more details that you can see with the monochromatic lens. But you can see also that the mono option, the monochrome option allows you to switch to ultra wide as well, which is then the ultra wide sensor, but it's using, uh, yeah, it's just de deleting the color from it. So it's not using extra information. The same goes for the three and a half and 10 times zoom. So only the one time one is really using the monochrome sensor, where I would say use this one if you want to have monochrome photos. But it's a cool option that you have monochrome photos and not only photos, I missed it already. Uh, video is also possible monochromatic, which is sometimes also very useful. We have the usual features, time lapse, uh, high res, where you can shoot 50 megapixel photos, but also dual view, which looks like this. So I have the option to have the front facing camera there. There actually uh, on the screen this is like an opposite direction and I can change here to have it in a small view if I want to or side by side and probably I can change the sides as well. Uh, cool for vlogging sometimes here and there and you can switch also with one hand again the zoom levels of the main cam if you want to which is also pretty awesome. Let's go again to the more section. We have panoramic shot, light painting, document, 
Uh, light painting is pretty cool as well if you want to do some uh, uh, starry night. Uh, I can show it to you. Light painting options. So you have traffic lights, uh, graffiti lights, uh, silky water that you can have or star trails. So pretty pretty cool option. Documents if you want to scan in. I don't have a, oh, my scanner broke so I was using the documents application because it's automatically detecting documents, cutting them out and optimizing them for readability and yeah it acts like a scanner basically. Snapshot option is a nice option that allows you to have uh, various different options for zooming of, as well but it's taking a snapshot so that means like quickly uh, taking a shot without be much processing to just quickly take the shot for sports action and such uh, scenarios where you have to have a sharp fast shot. Slow motion, AR lens, um, just like I think a bit of playing fun and story creator as well. I don't touch it right now because it will like play some music that is copyrighted but yeah story creator allows you to easily create stories and uh, there's multicam which is a very unique Multicam, which is a very unique feature which allows you to connect to other Harmony OS devices, uh, Huawei devices that have this feature enabled so you can have like multi camera setups with multiple devices like I have one smartphone on the left, one on the right and I have my tablet in the middle and I use my tablet to switch between the left and the right smartphone everything will be recorded on the tablet that also has this multicam feature. Pretty pretty nice option is I think so. Now almost nine minutes talk about the Huawei P50 Pro's user interface of the camera. I think this is enough. Let's go to the iPhone one, which probably is a bit less uh, of explanation. needs a bit of less explanation. Three, two, one. I think the iPhone is recording right now. So here's the user interface of the iPhone. You can see it's pretty simple. In photo mode, of course, we have also the option to go up to subjects and uh, uh, go close here. And it should switch automatically to the macro lens. As you can see here, if I go away, it's switching back. Uh, the switching is might be a little bit more smooth because they have a nice little animation. Same goes for zooming in. Three times zoom, you can see, wow, such a cool animation even to the ultra wide angle you don't even notice that it's switching cameras which is like super super cool so well done apple you can do this i can do this all day long if i don't have anything else to do anyway uh, this is basically everything <laughs> in terms of uh, options to to do like i have on the left i have to tell you on the left because I can, maybe i can show you here on the left down there down there i have uh, the option for the flash to turn it on and off that's all i can do here and i have a little um, bar also i thought i think i can switch yes i can just slide up here on the uh, on the area where the uh, switcher here is and it will whoops <laughs> it will then go and show me some other options here one-handed use i think iphone has some advantage here because i can also yeah uh, achieve or i can also uh, come to those options here on the right hand instead of only going to the left. I can choose the aspect ratio. Yeah, 4 by 3 Well, I can choose various different color profiles in this case, which contrast you can see there. Changing stuff, vibrant, warm, cool. So... They don't tell it its color profile, but it's acting the same way as color profiles. Yeah, it's doing probably processing wise a little bit more but uh, we have moments here i think it can live live uh, it's called live here live photos in at huawei it's called moments here it's called live photos and the 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 flash i can set it to on to auto or off which is by default off i can switch the camera if i want to of course and i can touch to focus yeah uh, great how do i go back click on this arrow here and then I can go also in video mode. What I'm interesting is interested in. I can see video mode. Wow, wow, wow! 60 frames per second. Uh, what can I do with the video mode? Can I go close and it's switching cameras? Well, ooh, is it? Is it really switching or was this like? Yeah, yeah. Wow, it's switching. It's doing some switcheroo. Oh, you seen this? <laughs> That's not me doing the switch. It's switching automatically also in video mode to the ultra, to the ultra close one. Hmm, if I would like that, I'm not sure. Uh, by default, in video mode, switching like this. Anyway, it's doing this, and you can see it here. We have the option on the left to switch between 4K, HD, 60 and 30 frames per second. And we have also some other options here as well, like, what is this? 
exposure compensation probably yeah and the other one is just the flash on off or auto again and uh, uh, yeah flash on or off what is this here ah this is the exposure compensation it's showing me that I had it set to zero point something uh, this is what you can set there are no profiles for 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 anything here in in video mode so you don't have the option to uh, set another another profile here one of the profiles that they have in photo mode for example so this is what you get and uh, yeah, no option for stabilization options that you can change or anything else that you can basically do with this uh, in this mode uh, then we have the new cinematic mode which allows you to have this fake background blur which is now working a little bit uh, yeah we have slow motion we have time lapse what do we have else portrait mode of course as well for portrait and we have this various different options here for the portrait photo mode of course you can also zoom in uh, like this with one hand quickly and I think it's a more fluid zoom than on the uh, Huawei and we have panoramic photo that's basically everything what you have there's not, mu not much to set up here in the iphone camera application this is everything that you get and have and uh, yeah what do you think about it well this little comparison i think uh, i'm not sure why apple is calling it pro because uh, i don't so much don't see so much pro options just like also in cinematic mode <sighs> Is the f-stop number you can change this is like think an advantage uh, but this is like everything it's like no it's not really pro i have to say and uh, yeah what do you think about it uh, write it down in the comment section that is now everything for this little uh, camera app comparison if you want to see the camera comparison real photos and, f and videos taken with the iphone and uh, i noticed oh cinematic mode. Uh, when you want to <laughs> yeah you can just click there somewhere or in the description box or at the end of the video you will see it there's the link so you can check my other video this is everything for this video i hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching like share and subscribe until the next time bye how do i go out of here and stop the recording